Good morning, church, and welcome to all of our online viewers. I'm Pastor Scott Brown of Douglasville First Methodist Church. We're glad you're with us today. If you're first time joining us, we're so happy you're here. We're going to finish up our sermon series today on what are you searching for. And today we're going to look at the issue of purpose. So stay with us, let's worship together, and let's enjoy what God's Word has for us. Precious blood has left me forgiven Pure like the whitest of snow Powerful to make sin and shame retreat His covenant is making me whole So I will Church, we want to pray together this morning, and part of the reason our church has been digital only for a couple of weeks is we had some COVID outbreaks among our staff and our leadership, and uh, we know that's happening all around the world. So one of the things I want to focus on in our prayer today is that our world continue to find healing for this COVID virus, that the uh, vaccines come, or that this thing move out of the way, or God starts doing something supernatural. Either way, God's in charge of all of it. So as we pray today, will you join me in that vein? Father, we thank you for all that you're doing. Lord, it's been a crazy, crazy year um, in ways that we never could have possibly imagined. I was talking to a friend this week, and he said, this is a hundred-year thing. This is not something that happens once in a while. This is, this is one of those things that only happens in a, a lifetime. But God, we're facing it, and we're doing everything we can to do it well and to do it uh, safely. But God, we need you to continue to hear our prayers and come and, and just move against this virus that's causing so many problems. Father, help the vaccines come out. Let them be effective quickly. Uh, let your miracle power come and just remove this virus if that's what you want to do. But Father, will you lift our prayers and join in with all the prayers that are coming from all over the world. God, help us. And God, move us. We thank you for what it's taught us. We thank you for things we've learned during this time. We thank you for the break of, of doing things the same way and learning some new ways. But God, we, we, we just want people to be okay. And so, Lord, there are other things that people are praying about today. There are other sicknesses. There are other issues going on in their lives. And Father, we call on you for all of those things and pray that you meet the needs of everyone who's hearing my voice and praying together right now in one spirit and one mind. And God, we lift all these things to you. We pray for our message today that it will go out well, that people will receive it, and that your word will go forth and make a difference in our lives. And God, we give you all the praise and glory today and thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Good morning, church. We're back after a week off of our sermon series, What Are You Searching For? We had a little bonus week last week. Today we're going to wrap it up. Um, And we talked about the fact that people are searching for all kinds of things in this world, but there's some things you can only find in Scripture. And today we're going to look at purpose um, and how to find that purpose in your life. And um, I think there's some ways to do that, that if we're paying attention to what God's done in our life and what He's doing, then it might not be as hard as you may think. And we're going to look at this like we have all the others through the eyes of someone in Scripture. And we're going to look through the eyes of Timothy uh, this morning. Actually, Paul's writing to Timothy, but we get Timothy's life in this. And we're going to look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, the first 10 verses, as Paul begins his letter to his friend. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, in keeping with the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son... Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my ancestors did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I'm reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice and I'm persuaded now also lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God, uh, the Spirit God gives us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me as prisoner. Rather, join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy life not because of anything we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Paul's writing to Timothy here in a very uh, compassionate way, in a very empathetic way, because he loves Timothy, and he's calling Timothy Uh, in a very special and unique way because he needs Timothy for the ministry that he's doing. Now, we see in this passage uh, three things. We see where Timothy's come from. First of all, he came from a a family of faith, uh, a grandmother that had faith, a mother that had faith. We don't know about his father. He's got a Greek name in Timothy, so his father may have been Greek and may not have been a believer. We don't know. They may have been converts, uh, third generation. We don't know all of that. We just know Timothy was raised in a, the faith of his grandmother and the faith of his mother. So we know he was raised in what we would call today a Christian home. Knowing the scriptures, knowing about Christ, knowing about who uh, he was in Jesus Christ. So we know he had that raising. 
We know where he's going. Paul says, Timothy, I want you to fan into flame that gift that was imparted to you when I laid hands on you. We believe that when you become a Christian and you accept that calling in Jesus Christ to be a Christian, uh, that the Scriptures tell us that every one of us are given special gifts, uh, spiritual gifts. And so Paul is saying to Timothy, Timothy, you've been, it's, been, it's been there, it's down to the embers, we need to fan it into flame. Most of you have been around a campfire as it starts to go out, and when it starts to get down just to the embers, you can fan it or blow on it toward the embers, and all of a sudden it'll burst back into flame. That's what Paul's telling Timothy here. Timothy, this is, this is where you are, this is where you're going. Fan it into flame, and let's get busy about the ministry that God's called you to. So the third thing he tells Timothy is why. Why does Timothy have this calling? Why is Timothy who he is? And the point that he gives to Timothy is the same one he gives to all of us. We're saved by God's grace, and we've been called to a holy life. So here in that last part, we find where the beginning of understanding purpose comes in. We are saved by Christ. That means we are changed, transformed, made new. And in that, we are given a new identity. And we've talked about that over the last few weeks. But also, we're called in that salvation to a holy life. We're called to be more than we ever thought we could be. And we have to figure out what that call is. And that's where we find our purpose. He didn't say called into a specific ministry where you're a full-time minister or you are living the life of a, uh, of a missionary or living the life as a church staff person. He said we're called to a holy life. And so we find our purpose in that call to a holy life. But how can, how can God call us in that? How can he know all the way back through all of our lives that we've been that, that that's been part of who we are. How does God call us even when we've made a mess of the things that we have in life and do in life? And all of us, to some extent or another, have made a mess of it. Nobody's done it perfectly. When I was in seminary, um, one of the things that, that we had to face coming into the Methodist Church for ordination was what we called loyalty questions. In other words, they wanted to make sure you would do certain things because it was part of our uh, tradition, the Assembly of God Church, the Baptist Church, all had their things. And for the Methodist, one of the loyalty questions is, as a minister, will you perform infant baptisms? Now, I had never done infant baptisms before in my life. I was a different kind of Methodist, a little more of a charismatic uh, Methodist, and we, we didn't do infant baptisms, so it was new to me. And to be honest with you, I had a problem with it at first, until I had someone explain it to me and show me kind of what the whole thought process was behind it. And I had a professor tell me, Scott, you need to understand what it's showing us and what it indicates when we do an infant baptism is we're recognizing God's prevenient grace. We're recognizing that God is already at work in that child's life even before that child was born. And that that work that God is doing is going to be met out through its entire life. And that baptism symbolizes God's sovereignty in that. Well, once I heard that, I was fine with it because that fit everything I knew about God. God is at work in us long before we know God's at work in us. He's calling us long before we even know His name. And so that idea of sovereignty, a God that's been with us and knows us from the time we're in the womb to the time we're in the grave, is important for us if we're going to understand purpose. If you don't understand that, it's going to be difficult because we need to understand that God's been doing something in us all along. And we need to learn, if we're going to understand purpose and discover purpose in our life, we've got to live into the you that God has been revealing. That sounds a little cliche. I understand that. But please, please hear me say this again. We want to live into the you, into the us, that God has been revealing from the time we were born. And that gets challenging sometimes. So in other words, what we're asking, what God's asking us to do is pay attention to what God is doing and leap into that. If you want to know what you're born for, what you were made for, what you were put on earth for, and I hear that question all the time, what your purpose is, then you need to find out what God's been doing all along and be about that thing. And there's, a, there's ways to do that. Um, I like to hunt. A lot of you know that about me. And one of the things I'm really good at is I'm really good at finding out where the game is. 
especially with, with deer hunting. I can tell you uh, where a deer is going to come through. I can put up stands. I've done that for my friends. I, I've helped lots and lots of people learn to hunt, and I've put them in just the right places. Why am I good at that? Because I know how to pay attention to what my father taught me, how to look for the signs, right? How to look for a trail, how to look for food sources, how to look for where they're coming from and where they're going. And I study those things so that I know how to look for those things. So I look for the signs to know where the game's going to be. Well, in our Christian walk, it's the same thing. What we want to do is look for the signs of what God's been doing. If you're a Christian, you want to know what your spiritual gift is. That's a great starting place to find out what your purpose may be because I can guarantee you it's going to have something to do with your spiritual gift. If you don't know what that is, you need to come email us or, or talk to your pastor if you're not from our church or go online and find a spiritual gift inventory. Find out what that gift is, and that's going to be a big start. What are you talented at? What are you good at? What do you have a knack for? That's going to factor into this, into this formula that we're putting together. What are your passions? What do you love? What do you love reading about, studying about, watching on YouTube? What kind of things draw you? That may be part of this thing. And then there's the testimony of others. What have others said about you? What do others tell you you're good at? We've got a, a time and a place now where we've got so much negativism in our world, we don't want to believe good things about ourselves. And so I know people who I can tell them all day long, man, you're really good at this. No, 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 I'm not. No, you don't know me. And they're, they're taking their, their shame and their brokenness and putting it onto their talents and their passions. We've got to find this, this, this conglomeration of things that, that God has put in us and listen to the voices in us that we trust and, and look at the gifts and the talents and the passions and start putting all these things together. And it's going to give us a very strong indication of where our purpose may be. It may, may not be what you do for a living. It may not be what you do to, to uh, uh, earn a living for your family. It may be something you do completely separate, but your purpose is not necessarily your job. Your purpose doesn't necessarily, doesn't necessarily have to match up with your career. Your purpose is to live a holy life. And in that holy life, living out of that, you're going to bless people and you're going to do things that are going to make a difference in people's lives. That's where our purpose and our calling comes in. So don't get those confused. Don't, don't confuse the fact that you may do one thing very well to earn a living, but you, God may have other things for you to do as well that really are your true purpose. Um, and that's okay. God works in all of those things. Some people are fortunate enough. I'm blessed to get to live and do my passion and use my spiritual gifts to earn a living. That's not true for everyone. Um, and so we have to figure that out as in this process of figuring out what our purpose is. Now, Timothy grew up in the church. A lot of us watching this grew up in the church. Now, growing up in the church can have two, have a lot of great things, obviously, because you get a foundation, you get a knowledge of the Word of God, you get some sense of direction in your life, and you get a prayer life that kind of helps you along the way, and hopefully that works out for everybody. But there's a couple traps in growing up in the church that we have to be aware of as well. And, and Paul, I think, is addressing that even here in Timothy, and maybe that's some of the implied things that Timothy was going through why the flame wasn't fanned where it needed to be at the time. That's speculation. But let's, let's move forward in this. What are the traps? The first trap, I think, for those who grow up in the church, especially in today's culture, is the culture wants to tell us that you, if you had a preconceived upbringing, if you had kind of a, a place you grew up in, then you need to reject that, that source and understand and open your mind to more things in the world. And don't be so closed-minded. Don't be so small-minded. But reject your upbringing and uh, see what else the world has to offer. And that's the language, which is kind of scary, right? I had a young man tell me one recently that uh, he believed, because he was raised in a Christian home, that he was brainwashed. He was brainwashed to be a Christian. And that's what, that's what the voices in his world were telling him. So there's that trap of, of, of rejecting what we've known because there's other things out there. And we believe we're doing that for the sake of freedom, and we want to be free. But in reality, when we accept the voices of things that are false, the only thing they do is entrap us and enslave us to other ways of thinking. And so I'm not saying don't 
think through things. I'm not saying don't explore and question your faith. I think that's healthy. I think it's healthy to grow up in the church and ask the questions, why do we do what we do? And learn why these things are happening and, and get rid of the things that didn't matter and hang on to the things that do matter. But I do think we have to be careful and watch that trap of rejecting it just because it's what we've known and getting trapped in other thought processes and other uh, de even demonic ways of thinking sometimes. The second trap is the trap of expectations. Expectations can kill. Uh, you may have heard that in different places in your world. But if we grow up in the church and there's an expectation of us that because we grew up in the church and we have an expectation of ourselves that we'll always do Christian things and we'll always do things the right way and we'll always do things the way God wants us to and we'll always be true to God and to the church and we find out that that's not always the case, uh, those expectations can become burdens to us. God doesn't give us a faith so that it can become a religion. Let me say that again. God doesn't give us a faith so that it can become a religion. And in the religious part of it, we find expectations. It will act certain ways. It will pray certain ways. It will do certain things. Jesus gives us a faith so that we can have a growing, ever-increasing relationship. So be careful of the expectations of religion in the church and make sure that the thing you come out of it with is the relationship with Jesus that goes wherever you are and whatever you're doing. Now, that's for those who grew up in the church. Many people watching this did not grow up in the church. You found Christ at a later time, or maybe you're still on that search for Christ. How does God work in that? Well, here's the thing. Whether you grew up in church or not, God has been in your life, around your life, with you all along. There's never been a time you've been on this earth that God has not been aware of you and has not loved you. God died for the sins of everyone, not just the Christians. He died for us so that we could become Christians and have purpose and find meaning. And so if you didn't grow up in the church and you're a recent convert or maybe you've been converted your adult life or maybe you're still searching, as I said, the same things apply. Look at what has been around you. Look back at your life and figure out what worked. Look back and figure out what didn't work. Look back to the voices that made sense and places you found peace. Look back to the places where you're talented and God's given you those, those abilities. They were God-given whether you were a Christian or not. Look at what God's been doing and where he's been leading you. Look at what's happened in your life to bring you to where you are right now. All of that is part of the puzzle that you start piecing together to figure out what God has for you. And I use that word puzzle intentionally. Uh, when I got my call to ministry, the night, literally the night I got my call to ministry, we were at a youth event at West Georgia College. We were using the campus, renting it out for the summer, uh, and uh, right near here, which is very interesting. And I got the call, I knew it was from God, and I was struggling with it. And I had a good friend, Jim Moy. Uh, Jim's passed on now. Um, and just one of the greatest men of God I ever knew. Good friend, good, just a good man. And Jim told me that night, he said, Scott, don't panic. He said, I want you to picture a, a bookcase. And he said, God's going to start adding books to that bookcase, and before long, you're going to kind of see a direction that it's going, and you're going to know where God's leading you. And that proved to be very true in my life. But in the same vein, it's like putting a puzzle together. The more pieces you put into it, the more you start to see where it's headed. If you're looking for purpose in your life, first and foremost, I can tell you it's going to be in God. He's the one that created you. He's the one that made you. He's the one that formed you. He's the one that set in you all the things that make you who you are. So he knows better than anybody what that purpose is. And little by little, he's been trying to show you that purpose throughout your whole life. Now, you may be a teenager, you may be in your early 20s, and this message may be speaking to you right now as you're trying to find that purpose in life. You may be hitting retirement age. You may be well past retirement age, still hoping you'll find that purpose, that one true purpose that seems to have eluded you all your life before you leave this earth. I believe that's possible. I really, really do. Because I think every moment in that we walk on this earth, every moment we draw air into our lungs, we're called into this holiness 
into this life that God wants us to lead. And that purpose may not be as grand as it would have been in your 20s, but it's still just as effective. And I can't tell you what that is. You have to look at that story. You have to look at your own history. You have to look at your own giftedness and talents and places that you have passions and find out what you can do for the kingdom. I promise you it's there. God never leaves us without giving us the opportunity to have purpose in this world. For Timothy, that purpose would have become evident after this moment. He would come on and take on the work of Paul. He would come beside Paul and walk with him when others had left him because they were embarrassed or they were scared or they were ashamed or whatever else happened because of his imprisonments. Timothy would come and find that foundation, find that purpose, and walk uh, in Paul's um, ministry with him and, and spread the word. I don't know everybody else's. I know mine. And I'm very blessed that I know that and thankful that I know that. And it's, been, it's made all the difference in the world in my life. What's your purpose? How do you find it? Look at what God has done. Look at what he's doing. Look at the story he's already written in your life. And follow the trail. Put the pieces together. And I promise you, as you pray into that, God's going to reveal himself. If you'd like to help with that, if you'd like to talk about that, if you'd like to have more information about that, um, and we can help you with that, you are welcome to join us on our Engage format that happens on Tuesday nights. Matter of fact, this will be the last Tuesday night this year that that will happen. We're going to take a break for the holidays and come back fresh in January. But for this month, you can join us. Uh, if you want to email me directly, if you want to set up an appointment with me or Pastor Tamlin or a pastor in your church, I promise you, uh, we can help you walk through that. So let me pray for you. And if this is the desire of your heart to find purpose, I believe it's God's desire to reveal it to you. So right where you are, on your couches and your chairs and your cars and your cabins, wherever you might be right now, I'm going to invite you to create that altar where it's just you and God. And we're going to ask God to reveal that purpose to you. Let's pray. Father, thank you that you put us on this earth not just to say, hey, go get them, see what you can make out of it. You put us on this earth to have purpose, and that purpose is to live in the holiness of life that you've given us and to live into that place where our relationship with you grows deeper every day. And Lord, I believe out of that comes ministry, and out of that comes purpose in this life. And there's a lot of people looking for that purpose right now. And there's people who are hearing my voice right now who are praying along with me God, show me that purpose. Young people, older people, people in the middle, God, they want to know. They've chosen you, or they're at least curious about you and they're looking. Lord, help them to see. Open their eyes. Let them see the story that you've been writing. Let them accept it and receive it. And let them find the purpose they're looking for from you. Not from me, not from the church, not from religion, but from you. And God, we give you all the praise because we know you answer these prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, join us if you can uh, Tuesday evenings at 7. Uh, email us, write to us, let us know what's going on. We're here for you. God bless you as you seek purpose in this world.